We're at the Site C Forum in Victoria, BC. It is Saturday, January the 27th, 2018. I'm talking to Bet Cecil. And um, Bet, why is Site C important to you? Site C really touches my heart in a whole bunch of ways. And it's not just about it being a really beautiful valley, which it is. Um, it brings together concerns about First Nations and the peoples who have lived there for thousands of years. Um, it l hurts my heart that people are going to have their livelihoods, their lives, their hunting grounds, their graves drowned and the government doesn't give a darn. In fact, they said, oh, it's just another long in the long line of things that have happened to the First Nations people and we're just going to continue it. So there's sort of that part of it. Part of it for me is um, I've done a, been really involved in environmental stuff just in general and the whole issue of food and what we can grow in a really unique microclimate uh, it blows, it blows my mind. You know, we, we've got droughts coming and, and you know, we get our food from California or a lot of it from California and it's drying up. And what the hell are we doing? It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. The food is there. There's food there. And, um, and it's fairly close to markets, you know. So it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, it doesn't make any sense downstream, which I actually didn't realize until uh, this weekend, how much damage these dams do downstream in these river systems. And then what that does to the peoples who are living downstream and the fish that are full of mercury and the animals that no longer come at the right time and the water that isn't there when it's supposed to be there and is too much when it isn't supposed to be there. You know, it's just, it's just compounding. And, it, you know, it's, it's a project that's... Um, you know, way out there in the middle of nowhere, but it, it's one that's going to affect us all. Like the whole province of BC, the economic, just the economic impact of this disgusting decision is generational. That's just the economic impact. And then, you know, we talk about the food, we talk about First Nations, we talk about all of that, you know, and that is also generational. And haven't we done enough damage, particularly to our First Nations people? Haven't we done enough bloody damage? Okay, is that, uh, yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Why do I care? It hurts my heart. That's the bottom line. It hurts my heart on a lot of different levels. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit about proportional voting systems in mm -hmm. relation to Site C. Oh, okay. Well, that's just sort of one of those big sort of system change questions. You know, would we have um, made this dramatically god-awful decision if we had had a proportional voting system? Um, I mean, I can't say that we wouldn't, but it certainly would have been, it would have brought, it brings more voices to the table. Um, we're about to have a referendum in the fall. Well, it has to happen by the fall. Who knows when they're actually going to call it or what the question's going to be. Uh, but just about any kind of proportional voting system will bring more voices to the table. And that's part of what's missing in the whole Site C thing is that there's a lot of voices that aren't there, uh, that aren't at the table, that aren't at the table in our, in our, in our legislature. Um, and will it fix everything? No, of course it isn't going to fix everything. Uh, but it will improve the chances, and it will improve the chances of actually having a decent civil conversation about the best way forward and, you know, fill in the blanks as to which uh, topic you want to talk about. But if you're going to have to work with these guys, uh, you know, a couple months down the line, or maybe you're in a coalition, you're not as likely to uh, slash each other up and tell lies right, left, and center. Um, I think one thing that would happen if... Yeah we had proportional representation today is that the NDP would split. Oh, I think that's quite possible. And so would the Liberals. Yes. Because they're, 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 yeah, their big tent, their big tent, and all that proportional stuff or all that mm, backroom negotiating takes place inside the party where you don't have much, unless you're a party member, you really don't have much access to that. Whereas, well, I'm a party member of the NDP. I have no access to that. You still have, don't have much access to it. The party is yeah. completely controlled by the people at the top. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Important. So, you know, you minimize it. You don't fix that completely, but you, you, do, you will minimize that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of um, organizing going on all over the province um, and trying to get ahead of the, the no side, um, who have way more money and have complete control of the corporate meter. 
um, there's none of the corporate media that's saying, oh yes, this is such a good idea. I agree. The, yeah. the corporate media is a great enemy on proportional voting because I think proportional voting is more democratic yeah. and the last thing our ruling class wants is anything uh, that is yeah. more democratic yeah. so they use their media to make yeah. sure we don't Absolutely. get it. And it's already started here on oh, yeah. CFAX, it's, yeah. it's yeah. ongoing. Um, I'm sure it will be everywhere within the media. Yeah. And we have to accept that and be ready to counter it, but I, I don't yeah. know if we can or not. But, well, in terms of the box and in terms of the media, our, our access to media is uh, the watchdog media, the, um, uh, there was a couple of other terms for it, uh, alternative, not necessarily, media. independent, thank you, the independent, I was going to say alternative, but the, yeah, the independent media. But getting that, you know, getting out of the silos and getting that into, um, the average person's living room, you know, the silo thing uh, in social media is, 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 is a real problem. But it's also where it ties, you know, it, some of that ties into the Site C stuff in, it, well, I guess I said that earlier, that uh, there would be more voices at the table. Uh, so you have a better chance of better, solu better solutions. You know? Were you surprised by what Mr. Horgan decided to do? I was not only I well, I not on the day he made it. I knew it was coming by the day he made it. I I was. I didn't expect it initially when I started. You know, we started reading the tea leaves, and it was you know it was obvious what was going on. Um, I was quite devastated, along with a lot of other people. I felt like I'd been kicked in the stomach, and I was furious and I was I was sick to my stomach and I cried and you know all the rest of it. Are you a uh, supporter of the NDP? I've voted mostly for the NDP but I've not uh, and occasionally been a party member but no I you know I've never thought that one party had all the answers anyway. Um, I am old enough and cynical enough to uh, have seen too many big anything big anything's a problem. A lot That's always true, you know, I don't care how good they start out. A lot of people were very surprised. A lot of people uh -huh. weren't because they, they thought that uh, there was something phony with, with the NDP leadership from a long time ago. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Oh, know, and, it and will. Just it really will. I mean, I know a lot of people have torn up their card and said, I'm never sending the money again. And, uh, I would, my, I personally would like to see the MLAs who, uh, there are a lot, a number of MLAs that are really upset about this. I would love to see them get together behind the scenes and say, look, you know, you guys come up with some plausible reason to change your minds or we're going to resign and sit as independents. Um, I've been told by party people that this is, you know, me, this is a pipe dream. I'm just smoking too much good stuff, whatever. But um, I don't know. I mean, somehow, somehow, we've got to make them realize that there's a big, big, big price to pay uh, for this de decision. Um, and it isn't going to be through. I mean, I think it's important to do the court thing, but I'd be really surprised if an injunction goes, I mean, it's worthwhile trying, but... You know, and if you've cited all the way through to the Supreme Court, well, the damn dam's going to be built before that decision comes, you know? So, uh, m massive pressure that we can from the outside, any kind of way we can find pressure from the inside. Um, we'll yeah, that do. kind of stuff. We'll see what happens. Thank you very much. Thank you.